Hello and welcome to the Grow CFO Show. I'm your host, Kevin Appleby, and today I've got Catherine Clark with me. Merry Christmas, Catherine. Hi, Kevin. Merry Christmas to you as well. So we're in this festive time of year, Catherine. Christmas Eve, all ready to uh, depart and stop working for at least 10 days. And that thought comes around about objectives, visions, so on for 2021. And I'm sure we're all going to be thinking about the year ahead over the Christmas break. So I just thought it'd be worth spending some time today talking about exactly that. So, Catherine, how do you go about that sort of thing? Yeah, so, I mean, it's actually something I do on a regular basis. Um, So for me, actually, rather than doing it on an annual basis, I do it monthly. And each month, and and whether people follow astrology or not, it doesn't matter, um, But actually on the new moon each month is a time when I set intentions for the month ahead. So I'll explain a bit more what intentions are a bit later on, but I think it's more about a sort of continual review of your own vision and your own objectives as the year goes on. Um, But as you say, this time of year, particularly when you can down tools, you know, have some time, or ideally with family, um, although that seems to have changed, um, is just to sit sit back and just have that time to think about what what the year ahead means to you. Yeah, and I must admit that I... I think about this in a similar way. I never think about a year. Um, Experience has told me that a year is just too long a period to get your head around. Mm. Um, If I think back to last Christmas, would I have any idea that in uh, late February, just before we went into a global pandemic, I was going to meet this guy called Dan Wells and we'd be joining forces and putting together something called Grow CFO? Absolutely no. Having done that, well, I'd suddenly have a a new look forward for two or three months to work out what the immediate next steps were. But looking beyond that, I've never found actually works. And I suppose you're talking monthly. My philosophy very much falls around the next 100 days. And it's no coincidence that that's what my other podcast is called. And when I started recording that with Graham, it was very much around that okay you've you've got a business you've got your own personal objectives how do you use the next 100 days to best advantage but like you I then split 100 days down into months well I think that creates sort of an agility in a way I mean that's one of the skills we need in life now anyway that that adaptability yeah. to change yeah. and, and and quite honestly really what's the point of looking too far forward um you know I, ideally I try and live as much in the in the present as I can um the future as we all know is unknown but it's still good to have that sort of motivation to think what can I achieve in the next month and yeah. um, have something to aspire to really and, and to motivate you in that sort of time frame and actually, I think it extends beyond the personal into the, the company objectives. And the, the one thing that I've got a certain amount of subject matter expertise in is planning and budgeting. And increasingly, I am of the opinion that budgeting is a complete waste of time. And I'd much rather spend time putting rolling forecasts together. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, you've probably got a forecast that's for the 12 months ahead, but there's only the first quarter of that that's in any degree of detail. Mm. And every month that goes along or every quarter that goes along, you forecast the next quarter in a lot of detail and work out what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I think that's even got, I mean, you know, sort of, yes, I was always involved in rolling forecasts as well. But I think now it's even on a more frequent basis than that. I mean, things are changing continually um, and life is changing continually. And I think, I think, you know, at the heart, I think of anything around goal setting or intention setting is looking at the purpose, you know, sort of that, that purpose of why. Mm-hmm. That you're doing something and, and when certainly you know when I look back to sort of when I had a team and and I was sort of trying to work with them to set objectives I never set their objectives which sounds maybe at odds to what you know sort of leadership management would tell you I gave them the framework to allow them to create their own self-motivation to set their own goals um, I really do believe people need to think for themselves um, 
and think oh. outside the box and, and attach and actually create that accountability for achieving goals by creating it from themselves. Um, and, and that was really around, you know, the role I had, you know, looking at that why, you know, the sort of purpose of an organization or, or the purpose for yourself um, and allowing people to see that bigger picture as to where they fit in and then getting them to work out where their role or help them, I supported them to do this, but actually supporting them to see why their role was important towards the achievement of the bigger goals, really. Yeah, and I, I think that purpose thing is, is really important. And I firmly believe that we have each of us been put on this planet with a purpose. Mm. And if you're going to start setting goals, objectives, whatever it is, you need to work out what your personal purpose mm -hmm. is as much as the organization needs to know its why as well. I know we've got yeah. fantastic books by Simon, Simon Sinek, Start With Why, which yeah. I'd advise anybody to read. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I've, I've always come up, well, I'm saying always, perhaps 10 or 12 years ago, I discovered a little tool called Single Motivating Purpose. And it's kind of coming up with this phrase that says, I get in the, up in the morning in order to mm. whatever, so that end result. And generally that for me has come down to, it's about helping people analyze, interpret, um, and so on in order to drive business success mm -hmm. um i could go find the full phrase somewhere which isn't actually tripping off the top of my tongue at the moment but it's <laughs> it's actually based on something it's called strength finder yeah and my five key strengths and they're, they're all brought together in that purpose mm -hmm. um, I don't know, strengths find is something you've ever come across, Catherine? Yeah, I use it with all my mentoring clients. I've done it for myself. I use it with all of my mentoring clients as a very early stage, you know, trying to work out what your value is and your strengths and, and bringing that together so that people can see themselves as an asset. Um, yeah. And I, I find them very accurate, so they're, they're all scared yeah, of accurate. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't think people always acknowledge. I think there's so much focus nowadays on what you can do better and, you know, you can get some quite sort of... Um, poor leadership at times that that yeah. creates an element of self-doubt and you know and doesn't and I, I, really I focus on the strengths that's actually a key point to make here i i believe objective setting is about knowing your strengths and working with your strengths not knowing what your weaknesses are and trying to do something about them mm. yes there's some grounds in knowing what your weaknesses are but you know if you're weak at something you're never ever going to be anything better than mediocre no matter what you do so i think find out what you're weak at and work out who to get to do it for you would be always my, no, my i think for me the, the angle on that is i think if you're working with your own purpose and your why is clear so you describe there why you get up in the morning you know i get up in the morning similarly to help people i've got just a real passion for supporting yeah. people and if they can be the best they can be and i can see that transformation that acceleration in the development or growth I get so much satisfaction from that. So therefore I'm shining. I mean, that, that's the point. When I'm doing something I love, I, I shine. Yeah. And yeah, when, yeah. You're, when you're exuding that light, that's when other people sort of are drawn to it. Uh, and that why is then clear because not mm -hmm. only are you inspiring yourself, you're actually inspiring others. Um, ah, that's, that, that's absolutely the, the way I see it. Yeah. yeah. And that's why playing to your strengths creates that light in a sense. Um, it, it, it just makes life easier you yeah. know trying to overcome so, a weakness is not is going to dim that i'm afraid so yeah it's uh... so i'd say first key piece of advice then catherine is if if you don't know what those strengths are and you're a little bit unsure about what your purpose really is and and challenge yourself yeah there's lots of things you think your purpose might be but do you shine when you're doing them mm -hmm. if that if the answer to that is well i'm not sure well you might not have that purpose right no first step go buy a copy of the book strengths finder 2.0 by gallup um it works in quite a simple way there's a code inside the book that you can use to get access to a website you go through i can't remember how many questions it is catherine it must be around 40 or 50 questions 
Yeah, they're just those very quick questions. You yeah. know, you're yeah. not supposed to think too much about. That's right. And that's the best thing is don't think too much about them. Put the first thing down that comes into your head. And it's all on the strongly agree to strongly disagree against various phrases. Mm. And the result comes back and it gives you your five top strengths. Mm. The book has a chapter on each of the strengths that Gallup have defined. So you go to the bits of the book and you find for your five, find out about them, read about them and take note of the recommendations and start mm -hmm. thinking because it'll tell you in the book some things that you can do to take advantage of those strengths. Yeah, I mean, it's a, very, it's a very good book. I think the only thing I would add just to give some balance to that, because I know that's very strengths focused and I am, I'm very supportive of strengths, but there are times, and this is why objective setting, goal setting, sometimes you do need to take yourself out of your comfort zone. Um, mm -hmm. So to an extent, we need to work on some weaker areas or perceived weaker areas, possibly to actually get our message across. Um, you know, the one there I can think of is if, uh, for example, you may not feel you're good at presenting or you know sort of being out there but actually to connect you know something to something or to connect people you may well need to overcome that fear and that perceived weakness to actually deliver the message across so um, I would just say bear that in mind when you're also thinking about your strengths yeah and I'd qualify that a little bit Catherine by saying there are there are strengths and weaknesses and there are skills yeah Strengths and weaknesses are kind of there, and that's kind of your makeup, your chemistry. Mm. Skills are things that are learnable, mm -hmm. and I'd put a lot of that presentation stuff in the skills box rather than strengths and weaknesses. And yeah. I'd say, yeah, if you're going to push yourself, then what are those skills that you need to pick up? Yeah. Take yourself out of your comfort zone in the skills direction, mm -hmm. not the strengths and weaknesses direction. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what else would you do around purpose, Catherine? Anything else you'd do around your your own personal why at this point? I think I think you just got to think how how do you want to feel? I mean, it's um, you know your your purpose is connected to things that you love, and the thing is with an organisation, and particularly we're working with grey CFO, we're working with you know aspiring and and, and CFOs. Um, you've got to find an organization that creates that passion for you. Um, so I think there's two different passions in life. There's your personal passions and, and what you may ultimately sort of work in or, or want to do for a living. Um, but the other area you can find that is in a company that shows that same uh, passion for you. Um, and I think if that doesn't exist, it's very, very hard to attach your own objectives to that of an organization. You've almost got to be at one with them in some way to, to really sort of feel uh, and understand that that purpose behind it and, yeah. um, and attach your actions to it. I, I suppose if there is that disconnection between organisation yeah. and personal purpose, well, it might be time to think about doing something about that. Well, yeah, because it comes back to your own beliefs and values. And, yeah. you know, we had a conversation recently, us as a team, and, you know, we realised we actually had very consistent values. And, and that, for me, is what's so important now that, you know, people are operating from that same place. Um, and that's where you can create that connection and even vulnerability between people that, that brings it together. And then we can move forward as, as a team um, and, and just feel successful in achieving that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So we've, we've talked quite a lot about purpose, Catherine. We've talked a lot about the why. Mm. And if you know your why, then you should be able to move on to the what. Yeah. Yeah. So what? What you want to achieve. So how would you express that? Is this goals? Yeah, I mean, I look at it in three ways. I, I have, I think there's goals, um, which is then how your actions sort of relate to your values. Um, and, and the sort of formation of goals, and even the completion, it just, um, you can help set your own rewards in connection with those. Um, it, it's motivating to be able to look forward and actually then look at the success you can achieve by completing them. Um, and, you know, what, what, when you have got a clear purpose, and let's say both of us talked about helping people and inspiring them with their lives, um, then you can link your goals sort of through to the outcomes. 
mm-hmm. and actually connect that through to your goal of, of helping people, for example. Um, and, and setting those goals is also very good for the mind um, yeah. because it creates a real clarity and focus with what you're doing and in which direction you're heading. I think without it, it's, it's a bit um, <laughs> it's a bit free form in that sense. Um, it's good to have some goals to, to create that focus sort of moving forwards. And um, the second part for me is intentions. And I mentioned that sort of up front, but. Okay. Okay. So what's the difference then between a goal and an intention? So an intention for me is a slightly shorter uh, time frame, um, And it's what do you want? Mm-hmm. And they're quite often written as if they've already happened. So every month I sit down and I write down 10 intentions and I write them as if I've already achieved them in a month's time. Yeah. And they can be anything. I mean, as an example, I could have one that said, I have created a mentoring program that I'm proud of, and I'm excited to sort of teach people and and help them develop. Um, So it's written as if it's already happened. So what you do is you effectively adjust your mind to it already being achieved and successful. You you have got me struggling here still to work out the difference between goals and intentions. Um, when I joined Coopers and Librand, we had a, a project management methodology. I've still got the book up there on the bookshelf, goal-derived project management. And the first thing that GDPM told you to do was write your goal down as though it had already happened and then work backwards from the goal. Well, I, I don't do that. So, if, so in this case, the goal would be, um, you know, in, increase the amount of mentoring I'm able to do. Um, or right. increase my number of mentoring clients or you know build my mentoring business um, the intention then becomes quite specific in that month okay okay so for right. example that's why I said about you know I have built a mentoring program because that's something I want to be doing in January okay got you got you so an intention is a lot more specific a lot more specific I think we're, um, we're probably violently dis- violently agreeing with each other we, we are yeah we are actually yeah. agreeing yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. so in a way the intention is like um planting the seed it's it's planting the seed at a point in time um but with the intention it's already actually complete yes um and that shifts your mindset into a future point but not too far in the future um it then connects through to what I call affirmations or positive affirmations, mm-hmm. um, which is a bit like the plant food. Um, so it's how do you want to feel? So if you look to that list of 10 intentions, yeah, you then very much strongly focus on how you want to feel. So you start building this picture in your own mind. So if I am mentoring and helping more people, then I'm, I have a real feeling of purpose, for, you know, fulfilling my purpose. I have a sense of joy. Um, I'm very motivated because I'm sort of serving and helping others. Yeah. And I, I, can, t- and t- I can tap t- into t- that t- feeling mm-hmm. of feeling energized or confident or happy. Um, and it makes it a lot more real. Mm-hmm. So give, give me a practical example of what, what an affirmation would be. Oh, well, I just gave one actually. So you know, I, I feel I feel joy. I feel I feel like I'm fulfilling my purpose. Okay. Um, I feel motivated uh, that I'm helping others. Yeah, I I see those affirmations as well. And I think what, one thing that I've learned over the years is you know, you've got this goal or you've got this intention. It's a state that you get to in a month, in two months' time. Um. But there's a danger of saying, oh, everything will be great when I've got there. Um, Um, And I've I've learned that actually there's a there's a whole arrival uh, fallacy in effect that if you're always looking at that point of arriving at the destination, then you're always thinking, well, the fulfillment's going to come somewhere in the future. Well, no, actually, you need to, to enjoy the journey. I oh, think yeah. The affirmations I... really come in. It's not, it's all going to be great in a month's time when I've got this mentoring program in place. It's, I'm actually going to enjoy putting this mentoring pro- process in place. And actually, yeah, yeah. What, what, what can I do on a day-to-day basis to ensure that I am fulfilled in doing this. 
Oh, yeah, you know, it's a daily practice. I mean, what I was going to say was, I mean, you don't just write these things down and, and just leave them in your in your journal and say goodbye. And I think this is this for me has been the biggest change. Um, stepping out of corporate where I don't know, it just felt too formulaic setting setting mm -hmm. objectives. Um, people didn't like doing it because they couldn't connect, you know, their objectives to the bigger picture or they couldn't see that connection. I, I, I'm a huge <laughs> cynic, Catherine. I, I believe that your <laughs> objective setting is simply a process to keep the HR department in jobs. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean, what we're talking about, the point is it definitely has a, has a purpose and it should be done because mm. people need to see their, their role in something. Yeah. But, you know, when I talk about intentions and affirmations, that's a daily practice to keep mm. checking in on them. Yeah. And it isn't about... Um, it's not about a future point. It, as you say, it's about enjoying that journey. What am I going to do today to move myself towards that? Yeah. Now, now, I hate to use the word magic because I'm, I'm sure you'll think I've all gone a bit strange. But um, <laughs> all I can say is I've been setting intentions now since April on a monthly basis and they've all been achieved. But that yeah. isn't from too much effort. It's as if once you set them... And because they're things you actually believe in, and this is the point, it's do you believe in what you're trying to achieve? You will achieve them. Yeah, and I, I, I'm totally with you on that one. And to your end affirmations, I use something, now I've got a little bit out of practice over the last two or three months of doing it. And I'm one, of, one of my objectives for after Christmas is to get right back into daily yeah. basis is using a little app on my phone called five minute journal. Mm. A five minute journal basically starts talking about what three things are you grateful about for? Yeah. It then goes on to say what three things would make today great. Because mm -hmm. your, your temptation at this point is just to put a to-do list in there. And actually, mm. no, it's, it's not what you're going to do. It's more, how are you going to do it? Well, I think this is where it connects through. And there's a, and there's a couple of techniques, I think, in, in terms of how. And I think you're moving into the how of how, yeah. how, how do you really do this and how do you stay focused each day? Yeah. Um, I was just going to go on to say the thing <laughs> I'm going to ask you to do is write down your affirmations daily, yeah. basis, daily basis. Well, you yeah. don't need to necessarily write. Well, you, yes, you can write them on a daily basis because the whole point is how you want to feel actually is probably the most important part. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're building a, a combination of, of gratitude and, and, and affirmations and really building that confidence in yourself, in a sense, to actually take that forward mm. with the right energy, because you're waking up and you're thinking, what can I be grateful for today? It's amazing how all of those come together to create that energy you need to move forwards. Yeah. And it is about energy. It is definitely yeah, yeah. about creating energy. So I suppose we're drifting naturally into the how. Yeah. And, and I think the how, and again, I don't want it to sound too, but I think there's, there's a couple of sort of methods in a sense to, to really get yourself in this headspace. But I think one is if I, when you're talking about personal objectives, but in a work sense, and, and it can be in a personal, is to think of your goals in some kind of project basis. Um, mm -hmm. So sometimes the word project is better than goal. Um, and, you know, what may be your top three projects um, that, are, that are going on more generally? Um, and then really consider the top things that you must do to move it forwards in conjunction yes. with who are the people I need to reach out to because support in, in achieving goals is, is hugely important. Um, and then on a daily basis, what matters the most today? Yes. And just going through that bit of an exercise in your head, because I, I work a lot with people on, I say productivity or, you know, people get very overwhelmed with so many things happening in, in their lives and they forget to really step back and think what's going to make the biggest difference this week or today or in this month. And this is what this thinking process is about doing. Yeah. And there's, there's a book that I wrote, read uh, quite a long time ago called Essentialism. And one of the key points in there, and I know I've mentioned this on other podcasts before, so at the risk of sounding like a crack record, it's you can move an inch in a hundred directions or a hundred miles in one direction. Mm -hmm. And to mm -hmm. me, it's figuring out what that one thing is. If you're sitting down for the next month and you've got 15 goals written down, mm -hmm. well, go cross 14 of them out. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Which one are you going to focus on? Yeah, you might have 15 there, but no, 
next month's a new month, the month after is another new month. Yeah. What's the one thing that's going to move things forward today, this week, this month? And that, that for me is the way to move forward. Yeah, I, mean, I probably disagree just slightly and I wouldn't cut it to one, but I think this is where intentions come into play. You can have multiple intentions, but some of them are as simple as, you know, I have had a lovely Christmas with the people I've wanted to spend it with. It can be very... Um, yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? I think oh, we yes, yes, yes. when we think about intentions yeah. and sometimes, but sometimes it's quite um, simple, um, simple but important things. All yeah, be in there. And I, I think that's why you've got to think about this on a macro level and a micro level. Mm. The micro level, yeah, there are there are lots of things like you described, and you can't you can't afford to lose that. Yeah. But at the macro level, it's and that's where my hundred days come in because there's normally something one thing that's quite chunky. Yeah. And now a month might be too short to actually achieve it. It might be more like three months, but it'll break down into well, there's. There's phase one, there's phase two, there's phase three, there's this month, yeah. next month, and the month after. So like you, I'll I'll split yeah. it down into months. Yeah. But that that kind of one big project yeah. is probably the sort of thing I'm talking about. I don't have multiples of those. Yeah. Just one. I mean, I think what I've learned over the last few months particularly um, is just when I use the word dreaming, but like dreaming bigger. Um, yeah. You know, that's got to come into play. Again, I feel like in a, in a work environment, <laughs> to an extent, we're all thinking too small. And because it possibly wasn't our own personal objective, um, you know, we did what we had to do and maybe beyond that. But when you step it back to your personal objective, which is more the, you know, the sort of this session's about, you can actually dream as big as you want. Hmm. And play around with it, you know, set the scene. So when we're talking about the environment in which you set this, you know, take some time for yourself, sit quietly, you know, create that energy with the right people. But, you know, use it as a, as a way of moving your life forward positively um, yeah. for yourself. And I, I think I can't emphasise that dream big enough. And I, it comes back to a coaching client of mine, a guy mm -hmm. called Justin. Now, Justin runs a business it's called scale model scenery it's his his niche is the model railway industry mm. and justin started by uh designing kits for buildings that literally were pdf files so you went bought the pdf file from me you printed it out on your printer you stuck it you cut it out you stuck it under cardboard mm -hmm. and it gave you quite a sophisticated building um justin had this vision. He was he was doing this essentially in his in his house in Middle Leicestershire. He, he moved the business forward a bit so he wasn't just giving mm. downloadable stuff. He started producing physical products, mostly with a, a laser cutter in yeah. a garden shed. Um, Justin had this vision that he was going to move from Leicestershire and he was going to live in Cornwall. And he was going to live in Cornwall with a, a really nice house by the seaside. And he was going to have a, a big building in yeah. which lots of stuff were being produced. There's going to be a team of people. Um, there's going to be a shop, um, so on and so forth. Yeah. There's going to be a training facility. And we got involved as we were, we were chatting. And Justin basically said, Kev, I've got, I've got this vision, but I've got no idea how to get there. Can we work together as a coach? And we started looking at things and I was scratching my head as well and thinking, Justin, how do you take this 50,000 business, 50, pound business that, yeah, it's giving you a decent salary. There's nobody yeah. working for you into, into what you're looking at. You're talking about a tenfold increase here. Um, that was probably four years ago this year. Justin moved to Cornwall, yeah. took the rent out on the big industrial unit on an industrial wow. estate. His one laser cutter is now a bank of four laser cutters. Wow. He's employing uh, three or four members of staff. And no, all out of that one dream. This is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah. It works. Well, it, it, it definitely works. I mean, you know, whether you believe in the law of attraction of, or not, it, it works. Um, mm -hmm because it's about your dream and, and visualizing that, that future point. Um, yeah. So, yeah, 
I think the more you can tune into that, the more you can actually see that picture, the, the more real it becomes. And 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 I'm probably like you're saying, it's 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 one step at a time. I'm I'm not saying you can go from nothing to something big. It is about what, what I think we're talking about today is what are those small steps mm. that you take either day in, day out or month in, month out towards that vision? Yeah, but I'm just thinking back to Justin's example. Then. And one, one of the things we always talked about whenever a decision came up, it's look, OK, you've got this problem now because suddenly you're a hundred thousand pound business. We got to find a solution, right? We're not looking for a solution now for a hundred thousand pound business. We're looking for a solution for a half million pound business. So, what's that solution going to be? You've it comes back to something you said earlier about in in intentions about writing things down as though you've already achieved them. Mm. Your mindset in a lot of cases has to be, I've already achieved this. Mm -hmm. You don't think big enough. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I mean, I'm sure we both agree. It's got to be an element of realism at a point in time. But yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, it's got to be there's got to be some realistic <laughs> um, <laughs> assumption on it. But um, but yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think about vision boards? Is that something that you'd put together? Yeah, I mean, I, funnily enough, I haven't, and I've always meant to, but I haven't, that's just being honest, um, but mm. I know a lot of people do, because, but it's what works for each person, and I think a vision board does create the actual visual, um, yeah. maybe, maybe you hold it in your mind, or maybe you need to sort of, you know, create a vision board, and for anyone who doesn't know, I mean, a vision board is finding any images, or, well, images primarily, that you can stick on a board that represent how you want to feel, or where your life is heading. And again, yeah. you tune into it in the same way as you may do your intentions and your affirmations. It's, I mean, the, the phrase I, I absolutely love is where attention goes, energy flows. So whether you're setting it in your mind or on a vision board, that is where your attention is going to go. So everything you do is going to be moving towards and focusing on what you want and not on what you don't want. Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally, totally get that. And I think like, like you, I probably don't do the physical vision board, but I've probably got that in my mind. Mm. And actually just spending some time occasionally closing your eyes and looking at that and kind of chilling and mm -hmm. you know, getting your brain in the right place of what the future should look like is a darn good idea. Well, for some people, how, a picture on the wall works. For me, it's a picture yeah. in my mind. Yeah, and also how you want to feel. I have to say, a lot of what I've done in the recent years is thinking, how do I want to feel? Who do I want around me? You know, who around me? I, I, I really do try and surround myself with people who, the right people who give me, A, the support, but also the energy and mm. the belief in what I'm doing. And the, the difference there is is just incredible, really. Um, yeah. And I joined something a number of years ago when I first started setting my own business up called Internet Business Mastery. Learned a lot of basics of internet business, but there was a huge, huge part of that up front that was all about mindset. Yeah. And Jason and Jeremy, the guys that ran it, just started talking about the five freedom factors. And they went through freedom of time, freedom of location, as freedom of money, but freedom of thought was one of the big ones mm -hmm. and freedom of who you want to associate with. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, you've you've got to think across all five of those. What do you want to do? Where do you want to do it from? How much time do you want to spend on this? Yeah. Um, difficult one when you're working in corporate and you're expected to show up from nine to five five oh. days a week and probably there's a lot of pressure on the show up longer than that but yeah think about those in the house think about those freedom factors mm -hmm. um, a lot of what you learn in corporate is all building towards that anyway i mean yes that environment doesn't fully support those um <laughs> freedom yeah. factors um however and this is what i i look at and that's why i have um you know i've, I've loved the journey i've done in a way, though, it gives you all the tools and, and, and all of those other things that allow you to develop into that. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think it does. Absolutely. Um, you've almost got to go through a bit of that or, or many years of that to actually work out what your values are and what you do want from life. Yeah. Yeah. So on the practical side, Catherine, we, we're talking about the how. We talk about vision boards, but you know, do you have a plan on a piece of paper? Well, my intentions are written out. So, I mean, I, I do think having a plan or having written sort of certain things down is important um, because I think where it's important is to explain to other people. And, you know, certainly even I'm working on at the moment, sort of thinking, how can I communicate exactly what it is that I'm doing and why? Mm -hmm. And that communication piece is, is critical. You know, you've got to be able to, in that sense, I, I use the word market what you do, but you have almost got to be able to sell what you're doing and, and why. And, and the way that's written is incredibly important. So I'd say there's, a, there's an interesting flip side to telling other people as well, that you're creating the intention to do something. And by actually physically, uh, physically articulating that to somebody else, I am going to do this. You've you've made that intention public, and yes. you've effectively you've put a bit of accountability in place. Yes, exactly. And I, I could easily come back and say, "Oh, Catherine, you told me you were going to do that a month ago. Mm. Have you? Mm. Yeah." Yeah, it's, it's really important. I think you've, you've got to almost put it out there. And it's why sometimes accountability partners is a term that's quite often used is very important. Mm. It's someone checking in on you. I mean, if you leave it all to yourself, you've got to have a, a, an awful lot of self motivation to see things through. But if yeah. people are, you're almost like accountability partner or partners, then that sort of checking in and, and helping them stay motivated and engaged is what actually helps move those sort of things forward. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also believe in writing things down in a smart way, mm -hmm. but I, I'd increase it to smarter. I put two, two extra letters on the end and smart. It's specific. Yeah. It's measurable. It's achievable. It's realistic. Mm -hmm. It's time bound. But the next one, the ER becomes very important e enjoyable mm -hmm. relevant and this comes back to what Catherine was saying earlier about is this something that is going to take you to the place you want to go to so so specific measurable actionable realistic time bound exciting and relevant so Catherine I understand you've been writing a blog on some of this yeah, I just do very sort of short blogs, actually. I try and, because one of my philosophies in life is clarity or simplicity. Um, so, I mean, I might just read it out. It's a very short blog on the power of vision. Come on, then. Power of vision. Sounds um, excellent. Yeah, so I just read it out and just, you know, but it's, um, so the power of your vision is in seeing yourself doing the thing you want to achieve. Be the leader, the director, the owner of a successful business, the person who helps others. If you can see who you want to become and why, you can be that person. You can step into their shoes and stride purposely forward. Never lose sight of what you want to achieve. It is the glue that holds every small step together. It is the light that you keep moving towards that stays lit even when your motivation fades. Your vision is what drives you, but you must never forget that you are the driver of the car and along the way, you can choose to go in any direction. There is no sat-nav with a preset A to B. It's a back to the map and back to choice. Your vision isn't the outcome though, because even though the outcome is part of the journey, it is a successful achievement that becomes a stepping stone to something even greater. It will take energy, dedication, determination, and smart choices. But if you surround yourself with those who believe in you, and keep your dream alive, you'll believe in yourself, and then anything is possible. That is brilliant. That Thank feels you. like a great note to end on. Catherine, that's been superb. Thank you very much. Once again, Merry Christmas, and hope all your goals, intentions, and affirmations are very, very visible in 2021. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, and happy Christmas to you as well. And to everyone, anyone listening, happy Christmas.